topic 5 on neuron. Neuron, or called as a nerve cells, is a structural unit of a nervous system. They are large, highly specialized cells that function to conduct nerve impulses from one part to another part of the body. There are three special characteristics of neuron. The first, they have extreme longevity. With good nutrition, neuron can function optimally for a lifetime. So, your neuron are as old as you are and will last you for the rest of your life. Second, emitotic. Neuron do not have the ability to divide, not like the other cells. They cannot be replaced if destroyed. But there are some regions in the brain that contain stem cells that can produce neuron throughout life, such as olfactory epithelium in hippocampus and subventricular region. And the third characteristic, neuron have exceptionally high metabolic rate. Neuron have the highest energy demand. They require continuous and abundant supply of oxygen and glucose. With only 2% of body weight, brain use up to 20% of the whole body energy budget. Now let's look at the structure of neuron. The largest portion of neuron is the cell body or we call as soma. This is where the nucleus can be found. Like other cells, the cell body contains usual organelles such as ribosome, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, microtubule and neurofibrils. There are two types of neuron processes. Neuron processes are finger-like projections from the cell body that are able to conduct and transmit signal. The first one is dendrite. They are typically short and highly branched. Numerous dendrites extend from the cell body and functions in receiving stimuli and sending signals to the cell body. So the dendrite will receive the stimuli and send it to the cell body. Second is axon. It's a long and slender projection of a nerve cells that is uniform in diameter along its length. So the structure of axon here runs through the entire length of the neuron. The initial regions of axon arise from axon hillock, which is here. Axon conduct nerve impulses away from the cell body, can be to another neuron, can be to a muscles or can be to a gland. Each neuron has a single axon leaving its cell body. The axons of many neurons are surrounded by a myelin sheath that is made of Schwann cell. The gap between myelin sheath is known as the node of Rinvia. At this point, the axon is not insulated by myelin and serves as to generate a signal. Nearly all voltage-gated sodium channels are concentrated in this gap. So these gaps are concentrated with a sodium voltage channel. Functions of myelin sheath are, the first one is it acts as an electrical insulator and prevent movement of ion through it. And it also speed up transmissions of nerve impulse along the axon. The action potentials can leap from one node of Renvia to the next because nodes of Renvia are concentrated with the voltage gated sodium channel. So it will leap or jump from nodes of Renvia to the next until it reach to the synaptic terminal. So this type of conduction is what we call as saltatory conduction. Besides neuron, there are other cells in the nervous system that we call as glia. Glia are non-neuronal and supporting cells required by neurons. It functions to nourish neuron, insulate the axons of neurons and regulate the extracellular fluid surrounding neurons. Glia in central nervous system include 
astrocyte, which is here. Astrocyte is a star-shaped cells that functions to maintain neurons working environment such as to control neurotransmitter around synapse. It helps to support neuron and supply neuron with the nutrients. Second are oligodendrocyte, which is here. So oligodendrocyte functions to myelate neuron in the CNS. So they have the same function as Schwann cell. So Schwann cells forming myelin sheath in peripheral nervous system or PNS, while oligodendrocyte form myelin sheath in CNS. Third are microglial cells. Microglial cells is a brain immune cells that functions to protect against injury and disease. Fourth are ependymal cells. Ependymal cells line spinal cord and ventricle and help to create cerebrospinal fluid. So these are four glial cells in the central nervous system. While in PNS or peripheral nervous system, there are two types of glial cells. The first one the first one is Schwann cells that functions to form myelin sheath in PNS and another one is satellite cells. Satellite cells perform similar function as the astrocyte. There are three types of neuron. One, sensory neuron. They convey signal from sensory receptor to CNS. So here, they receive the information of stimuli from sensory receptor and send it to CNS. So in this drawing, the cell body and dendrites are black and the remaining axon is red in color. Sensory neurons transmit information about external stimuli such as light, touch, smell, blood pressure and pain. Second type is interneuron. They connect sensory and motor neuron and with other cells in the CNS. So it not only connect sensory and motor neuron, but also connect between one neuron to another neuron in the CNS. It integrate data of sensory input and relay signal. As you can see in this drawing, this show dendrite. And here is a cell body while the remaining is axon. So it receives the stimuli from sensory neuron or from another neuron, interpret and analyze the stimuli and interpret and send it back to motor neuron or uh, to another neuron. And the third one is motor neuron. It conveys signal from CNS to the effector. So here, the dendrite received the stimuli from interneuron okay, or from the CNS and send the signals to effector. So example of effector here is a muscle cell. Transmit signal to muscle cells cause them to contract. Information processing by nervous system occur in three stages which are sensory input, integration, and motor output. Sensory input come from many sensory receptors that monitor changes occurring both inside and outside the body. As in this example, striking of patellar tendon with a reflex hammer activate the sensory receptor and cause it to send the signal or the information all the way to the CNS through sensory neuron. Another example, when you feel pain after touching a hot object, a sensory receptor which is pain receptor picking up that information and send it to the CNS. Then integrative function take place in the CNS which is the brain and spinal cord. This organ receives sensory information, process the information and make decisions regarding the information. For example, if you feel pain, your brain might decide you to move away from the painful stimulus. 
Once the CNS make the decision, it then carried out motor functions where the neuron in the CNS carry an impulse along peripheral nerve through this motor neuron to the affected. So the CNS have made a decision and send back the signal through motor neuron to the affected. So affected here can be muscle or a gland. Muscles here can be skeletal muscles, can be smooth muscles, or cardiac muscles. So the motor function is the stimulation of a muscles or a gland. In this example, it stimulates the skeletal muscle and cause stretch of a quadricep muscles that make lower leg to kick outward.